Shalom from Gush Etzion in the beautiful Judean hills between Jerusalem and Hebron. Thank you to the organizers of this online rally calling for Jewish sovereignty on Jewish land. I speak on behalf of the Sovereignty Movement, which I have the honor to co-chair with Yehudit Katzover, one of the pioneers of the renewed Jewish settlement in Hebron. Sovereignty, what is it, why is it, and how should it be done correctly? 1967, the Arab countries are getting ready to attack and destroy 19-year-old tiny Israel. A miracle happens. Within six days, the Israeli army liberates the missing parts of our homelands. Judea, Samaria, the Gaza Strip, Jerusalem, Sinai, the Golan Heights. But it is an incomplete victory. What should have been done on the seventh day was to officially include all the areas that we had returned to into the state of Israel. Israel should have immediately applied its sovereignty over the entire area. But unfortunately, the government decided not to decide and created a civil administration to administer these areas till a decision will be reached. Thank God, for other people, it was clear what should be done. God had brought us back home where our forefathers had lived for thousands of years to the land which we are commanded to settle, plant, and flourish. Clearly, we must renew Jewish life in our God-given biblical heartland. Dozens of pioneers set out to resettle the land. Kirat Arba, Hebron, Shiloh, Betel, Elon Moreh, Frat, and many more Jewish communities sprung up. 53 years later, half a million Jews now live in Judea and Samaria, but its legal status is still not clear. The left and the Arabs came up some years ago with a two-state solution. Very quickly, after we buried 1,500 Israeli victims of Oslo, the Israeli public understood that the idea to create a Palestinian state in our heartland was a suicidal one. So if we say no to a Palestinian state, what is our yes? What is our vision? That is when we set out and created the sovereignty movement in 2011 to promote the application of Israeli sovereignty over Judea and Samaria in order to once and for all make it clear that between the sea and the Jordan River, there can be only one national sovereign entity, the state of Israel. Together with many other public figures, organizations, and politicians, we promoted the sovereignty plan for the past nine years till it reached the prime minister's office and the White House. How happy we were when we heard that President Trump spoke of the historic rights of the Jewish people in its land and consequently the legality of the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. Finally, an American administration that is not scared to side on the side of truth and morality. But then came the deal of the century, a document that totally contradicts these values, a document whose basic premise we cannot accept that the Arab Palestinians have a legitimate desire for self-determination and that Israel should give parts of its homeland to allow territory for a future Palestinian state, Israeli sovereignty can be applied to only a tiny fraction of the area while the remaining huge areas will be designated for the establishment of a Palestinian state? And we ask what happened? Who revived the suicidal two-state solution when it was not only buried in Israel, but was also erased from the Republican platform by dear friends of Israel who understood its dangers? What kind of sovereignty is this? If the Jewish people have historic and biblical rights over 100% of the territory, why are the Arabs entitled to 70% or to anything of our land? Recognizing the right of those who robbed the land from its rightful owners is a fatal blow to morality and justice and a capitulation to terror. The fact that them receiving a state on our land is conditioned by many restrictions is not serious, for we know from the Oslo Accords and all other agreements that over time these preconditions that they have to meet, they evaporate. When we understood that the dangers of the deal of the century also include the possible division of Jerusalem, the handing over of parts of the Negev, the freezing and choking of dozens of communities, we launched a campaign titled Yes to Sovereignty, No to a Palestinian State, calling upon our Prime Minister and our government to apply sovereignty over Judea and Samaria, but unrelated to the deal of the century, without any agreement to a Palestinian state, nor to any compromises. Our leaders must act on the basis of Israel's interests, even if our friends overseas don't approve at the beginning. At some point, they too will understand that even just talking about the creation of a Palestinian state goes against the interests of Israel and America. Asking Israel to compromise, even in theory, will continue to inflame the hope of those Arabs that they will gain more and more by means of terrorism. The sovereignty that we are talking about is a sovereignty in accordance with the Zionist vision, historic justice and Israeli interests, with responsibility that will bring stability and prosperity to Jews and Arabs alike, that will enable the dispersion of the population and the establishment of many new cities and towns for the millions of Jews that will come on Aliyah, a sovereignty that will respect the individual rights of the non-Jewish minority as long as they respect the laws of the Jewish state, a sovereignty without the poison of a Palestinian state, 
that not only the majority of the Jews do not want, but also the majority of the Arabs, who tell us how they prefer residency and the Israeli sovereignty rather than citizenship in a corrupt, terrorist Palestinian state. The day of the application of real Israeli sovereignty over Judea and Samaria will be the seventh day of the Six-Day War. Application of sovereignty and its correct implementation will conclude that war with determination of the true status of the land of Israel as the land of the Jewish people. Our generation was chosen for this momentous time. With faith and conviction, we will construct this latest link in the chain of Zionism, the link of sovereignty. This is our mission, and with God's help, we are capable of accomplishing it. Anybody who will be part of doing this correctly, together with us, will be blessed. For blessed are those who bless Israel. Thank you.